Hi, I'm Alom Shaha and I'm a children's book author and also a dad to two young girls aged four and a half and two and three quarters. I work mostly as a science teacher and that's really what has informed most of the writing that I've done so far for children. My first book, Mr Shaha's Recipes for Wonder, was my attempt to get parents to be their children's first science teacher. I believe really strongly that parents are definitely their children's first teacher because most children learn how to read with their parents, they learn how to do arts with their parents, maybe play a musical instrument with their parents. And I don't think there's any reason why parents shouldn't also introduce their children to science. And obviously some parents might be more or less confident to do that. Perhaps they didn't like science at school or feel that they don't know much about science or enough about science to teach their children about it. And I wanted to write a book that would show any parent, regardless of their level of scientific knowledge, how easy it is to get their children thinking and looking at the world scientifically. So the book is full of activities which you can do at home with household equipment and materials which just introduce some ideas that help children to start thinking like a scientist. And the book was really inspired after a video project I did with the Royal Institution who approached me to make some films for them which would show parents how to engage their children with science. The film project was quite a success but I thought that it lent itself to a book treatment as well. I was very lucky that um, a scribe or scribble here in the UK um, gave me a deal for, for a book and they found this lovely illustrator Emily Robertson who, who just brought the book to life really. I, I can't praise her work enough. She's given this book such a distinct look and I absolutely love her work. So Recipes for Wonder did quite well as I understand it and so um, I wanted to do a follow-up book which was more about engineering and so I came up with this one, Mr Shaha's Marvellous Machines and this is really a book to get children making and tinkering and thinking about how things work um, using the same approach really which is that uh, everything in the book can be done with things that you have lying around the home mostly a scrap paper and sellotape really and also it's a book that parents can use with their children so that they can be thinking about what they're doing uh, as well as doing. So as a science teacher, for example, when I'm doing practical work, I know that it's really important for children to be minds on as well as hands on. And the book contains tips for parents to ensure that that's what their children are doing. And really, if I had one tip, it's, it's very simple, really, that um, when you're doing this sort of thing with your children, if you just talk to them, just talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it. I think that really helps them to engage with activities mentally as well as physically, if you like. Um, I'm really quite proud of this book. It's really a very personal book in, in many ways, which might seem surprising. And I think I can explain that to you if I, if I just read the introduction to you. So here we go. the introduction hollow. There we go. So the introduction is called The Joy of Making. I was born in a little village in Silet, Bangladesh. Back in 1973 there was no electricity or running water but there were lots of wide open spaces to run around in, a massive pond to swim in and no shortage of ways for a child like me to have fun. My family grew most of their own food and made lots of the everyday things they needed for themselves, including clothes, baskets, toothbrushes and hand fans for keeping them cool. They had to know how to make, mend and maintain a lot of things because they didn't have the convenience of supermarkets or the internet. Of course they had to buy some things like medicines and the cast iron water pump at the bottom of the hill, but they were experts at recycling and reusing things like glass and plastic bags which they couldn't make for themselves. When I came to England, I missed my grandparents, aunties, uncles and cousins. But I also missed some of the delicious fruits that used to be abundant, like mangoes, jackfruit and boroi, a small berry that was delicious when dried. My favourite fruit is the lychee and once we came to England, it was a real treat to have just three or four small, fragrant, juicy fruits a year. I remember going back to Bangladesh as a 10 year old and feeling like I'd won the lottery when somebody handed me a whole bunch of lychee straight from the tree. 
There's another reason why I love lychees. They always remind me of an older cousin who showed me something amazing to do with them after eating the flesh. He took one of the seeds from the lychees we had just eaten and using a hammer and a nail, he carefully made a small deep hole in the top of it. He then took a matchstick and pushed it into the hole so that it stuck firmly. Finally, he gripped the matchstick between his thumb and forefinger and gave it a quick flick, setting the seed whizzing around the table. He had made a spinning top and shown me my first homemade toy. A spinning top is a fun and interesting thing to play with, but what I found really special was the way my cousin had taken an everyday object that was destined for the bin and transformed it into something delightful. Over the years, I've come across many other examples of simple toys that can be made from things you might have lying around the house. The joy to be had from such toys isn't just from playing with them, but from making them. It's tremendously satisfying and empowering to make your own rubber band powered boat or balancing bird instead of buying it from a shop. I've included some of my favourite homemade toys as the marvellous machines in this book. Strictly speaking, a, a machine is something that does something useful or makes things easier for us, like a car or a vacuum cleaner. But I think that the contraptions and toys in this book provide fun and wonder, and that this also makes them useful. It's not just the finished product that's useful. The process of making these machines and getting them to do what they're supposed to do will help you understand how they work in a way that simply playing with them wouldn't. There are other benefits to making things for yourself, including developing your creativity, scientific thinking, problem solving and practical skills. I think we all have an innate desire to make things, but often lack the opportunity to do so in the modern world, where so much of what we consume is made for us. I don't want to make any promises, but constructing the marvellous machines in this book might just bring you joy in ways you haven't imagined and make you better equipped to go out and help the world with your ideas and skills. So there you have it, that, that's the introduction to my, my new book, Mr. Shah's Marvellous Machines, and I really hope that families and children using it will in fact experience the making of joy and hopefully through reading the explanations and so forth in the book gain some understanding about the engineering and scientific principles behind how they work. Now one of the things I feel very strongly about is that the ideas in the book aren't just available to people who can afford the book. Obviously if you're watching this and you can afford the book and you like the sound of it I'd, I'd love you to go out and buy a copy but I've also made a series of videos to show anyone who can't access the book how to do these activities and you can find them on my website at alamshaha.com forward slash machines. So uh, to finish up with I, I want to show you one of my favourite machines from the book. Now as I said this isn't strictly a machine in that it doesn't do anything like what a vacuum cleaner or a hairdryer does but I think you will find that it's delightful. So uh, this is the balancing bird and um, what you need to do the balancing bird is uh, a template from the book which you can trace from the book or you can download uh, a sheet like this from my website. Um, you need a little bit of spare card, I've just got a bit of cereal box here, um, some glue, some sellotape, a couple of coins, I'm using 2p coins, you can use 1p coins or 5p coins, a pair of scissors uh, and some colouring pens. Now I love this activity for numerous reasons but when doing it with children I think it's a particularly useful activity to do because it involves colouring in which my four year old absolutely loves, she's at that age where she can stay within the lines now, it, and it involves um, sticking and cutting skills and uh, primary teachers will tell you that it's great for children to practice these kinds of skills, these kind of uh, motor skills involving cutting and sticking. Um, so there's lots to be got out of this activity, but most of all, uh, as I hope I'll show you in a minute, it's just utterly delightful. So th as I said, first thing to do is to, to get hold of a piece of paper where you've got this template, um, either that you've copied from the book or you've downloaded from my website. And uh, before doing anything else, I would decorate the bird. So I'm going to do that for you now. Um, I think um, most children will do a better job than me. I'm going to do a quite a rush job now, just so you can see that it looks a lot nicer if you decorate it. You don't have to if you're really in a rush, but um, I think decorating the bird just makes it a little bit more special. So 
so this is very very rushed because obviously I don't think you want to sit there washing me colour in so here is my uh, gorgeous coloured in bird and then you want to stick the bird onto the card which I'll do it again try and do quickly so I don't keep you So that's stuck to the card and I'm just going to now cut out the bird shape. And you can help this, help with this part if you've got a child who's not quite ready to cut out. Um, my four year old isn't quite ready to cut things out very precisely. But as I said, it's really good for children to practice this sort of thing. And uh, I, I've used a bit of printer paper, but you can literally use scrap paper to print the bird out or to trace the bird. And you can actually buy a shop made version of this toy. It's called a balancing bird and usually it's made from non-recyclable plastic. And as you'll see in a moment, in order for it to work, it requires some weights and I'm using two two penny coins but if you bought one from the shop they have just these lumps of iron in them and you know when people are done with them they just end up in landfill and honestly I've got I've got one of the real things and this this cardboard version is pretty much just as good and certainly with young children just as delightful so look I've cut out my bird with a bit of on the bit of card it's cut out and then the next thing to do is to stick these 2p coins on the back like that so that's really easy to do you just use a bit of sellotape so that's one and that's two right so so that's pretty much ready you bend the wind wings down a little bit like that and the beak down a little bit and then you may not get this from the video you really have to do this yourself with a child because what happens really does delight and enthrall them what you'll find is that the bird will balance on your finger like that and I assure you that most children find that absolutely delightful so there you have it the Balancing Bird, and that's just one of the marvellous machines from my new book, Mr. Shaha's Marvellous Machines.